What up, Giants fans? In today's show, we're going to give you our weekly preview of the Week 10 matchup against the Houston Texans. And we'll also go over the latest injury report that features Kenny Galladay and a couple of other name-worthy players. But first, look, we've been doing it all season long, and it's worked more times than not. So let's get to 1,000 likes on the video right now. If you want the Giants to beat the Texans to get to 7-2, hit that thumbs-up icon and like this video right now. Week 10, Giants versus Texans. We're going to get into a preview in today's show as well as go over the injury report. Welcome into Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, as always. Let's get right to it. Let's get to the injury report. People that practiced on Tuesday that have not been practicing and have not been playing as of late. Kenny Galladay is expected to play this week after not playing the past four games through that MCL sprain. Cordell Flott has also not played for a while. Sounds like he might be ready to go this Sunday. O'Shane Zimenez, who had some big plays early on in the season. He practiced in a limited capacity today. Expect him to be back out there. Guess, guess since we can't have one X-Man out there because of a broken hand and a stupid ATV accident, we'll have another X-Man out there. Also, Richie James was in a red non-contact practice jersey, still suffering from that concussion he suffered in the game where he fumbled the game away for the Seattle Seahawks. And look, this is big news because Kenny Galladay hasn't played in a while and the Giants wide receiver core could use a boost from a guy that we're paying $72 million. I don't expect Kenny Galladay to get 100% of the snaps at the wide receiver spot. I think they'll slowly integrate him back into the lineup, but I do expect him to be a big part of this offense this week i'm expecting killing kenny galladay to score i tweeted that out earlier this week follow me on twitter at marshall green underscore everyone that follows me from today's show i'll give you a follow back just dm me preview so i know you came from this video but i'm expecting galladay to have a big week this week maybe not 100 yards maybe not eight catches but can you give us four catches for 65 yards and a touchdown i think that would be a pretty big performance and a much needed boost of just straight up talent at this wide receiver spot the Giants are lacking there right now I mean Saquon Barkley leads this team's interception so I'm expecting Galladay to not only play this week but be a difference maker let's show Galladay some love though because I feel like a lot of fans have turned their back on him me myself at times have done that as well because I'm disappointed in what he's been so far with the New York Giants but we got to rally behind our guys and show them some love do so in the comments. Type 19 if you want Kenny Galladay to score this weekend. Since we were just talking about Richie James, I think it's important to note that there were some different players back catching punts today at practice on Tuesday. Art Stapleton tweeted out that the Giants catching punts today were Darnay Holmes, Darius Slayton, Khalil Pimpleton, Wandale Robinson, and Richie James wearing that red non-contact practice jersey who is still in concussion protocol. Art said, I think they'd want Pimpleton as the returner, but it's a numbers game with practice squad elevations, which may work against him. It's also noteworthy that Adoree Jackson did catch some punts at practice today. If I had to say, I think we could see Wandale Robinson back there, maybe a little bit of Darnay Holmes as well. You never know, maybe they get really risky and put a Dory Jackson back there, who was a playmaker back in his days at USC. We showed you guys that did practice. Let's show you guys that did not practice. Aaron Robinson, not good news for him. It sounds like Aaron Robinson is going to be done for the year. Brian Dable actually said that it is doubtful that Aaron Robinson does return this year. Evan Neal did not practice as well. I don't, I'm not expecting him to play this week, maybe another week or two. I'd circle that Dallas Cowboy game on Thanksgiving for Evan Neal to come back. Daniel Bellinger, I haven't heard much news on him since he got poked in the eye, had that surgery. I think we're still a couple weeks away from Bellinger being back. Nick Williams was placed on IR, and according to Brian Dable, he most likely is going to be done for the year. And we have some new news on Xavier McKinney. He was asked when he could come back and he said there was no timetable. He continues to say he was not a driver in that ATV accident and that he broke multiple fingers. If Xavier McKinney's not going to be able to play the rest of the season, that is going to be a huge loss for this Giants defense. Hopefully Xavier McKinney can get back healthy because we need him on this defense. I'm upset. I'm frustrated. But at the end of the day, stuff happens. I mean, look, the Giants have had terrible injuries off the field before go back to JPP go back to Plaxico Burris 
and now this with Xavier McKinney. We also have some other good injury news for the Giants. Giants left guard Shane Lemieux was designated to return to practice from injured reserve. His 21-day window opens. Lemieux sustained an ugly toe injury that was more serious than it sounds. This was the original timetable, I'm told, so he hit the mark on field tomorrow. So pretty much what that means is he has 21 days to get back on the practice field and be elevated, and if he's not, he will go back to IR. I don't know if he's going to play this week, but it sounds like Lemieux is closer and closer to getting back, which will be a big boost to this offensive line. Lemieux, I expect him to slot in as the starting left guard when he does come back. Make sure you guys are subscribed because we're going to continue to put out videos every single day on the latest Giants news and rumors. And we're subbing for Giants dubs. Sub for Giants dubs. If you want the Giants to go out and beat the Houston Texans this week, get to 7-2 and two, and get closer and closer to that NFL playoff spot, hit that sub button. Don't be the guy who doesn't sub and the Giants lose because I will blame you. You, yeah, you, Mikey, right there. I'm blaming you, Mikey, if you don't go down right now and hit that big red button. Today's Giants Now video is sponsored by Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping with global reforestation efforts. It is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. The title pack gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land with unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. We plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, one tree planted and trees for the future to support global reforestation efforts. You can officially include the title lord or lady on your credit card, plane ticket, dating profile, etc., it makes a great last minute gift the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady we can build our own little giants now kingdom it makes an amazing last minute gift established titles is actually running a massive early black friday sale right now with discounts up to 80 percent off plus if you use the code chat you get an additional 10 percent off Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Grab a plot of Scottish land next to me and producer Lord Cooper trying to get a whole Giants Now Real One Kingdom going on in Edelston, Scotland. Get started. EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. That link is in the comments and description of today's show. This Week 10 matchup is going to kick off at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sunday in East Rutherford. And the Giants, they come in as six-and-a-half-point favorites as we film this on Tuesday afternoon. And the total over-under is 41. So Vegas is expecting a low-scoring game and the Giants to win easily. And I kind of feel the same way. I think the Giants are going to win this ball game. Give me the Giants 24-17. I'll go Giants 24 17 over the Houston Texans. Let's take a look now at some stats on the offensive end. Then we'll get to some stats on the defensive end. The Giants right now are ranked 22nd in points per game. They've been able to move up a little bit in yards per game. Still a pretty low in the NFL, 24th at 337. Their passing yards per game continues to be at the bottom of the league at 176. Never good when you're throwing for less than 200 yards per game, but it's the ground game that continues to carry it for the New York Giants. 161 per yards per game which is fifth in the nfl and they're converting on third down that's what you want to see converting 39.6 percent of the time for the houston texans they're a lot like the giants in the fact that they can't score points only 16 points per game this year they are worse than the giants in yards per game they're the second worst team in the nfl at 309 they can't really pass the ball or run the ball both of those ranking at 25th in the nfl and they're one of the worst teams on third down they only convert 31% of the time. On defense, though, the Houston Texans are one of the best pass defenses in the NFL. The stats got skewed a little bit last week against the Philadelphia Eagles, but before that, they had one of the best passing defenses in the league. They also have 19 sacks this season, which is 17th in the NFL, so the Giants are definitely going to have to keep Daniel Jones upright in the pocket, but they can't stop the run. They can't stop a nosebleed. They give up 180 yards per game on the ground, which is dead last in the National Football League. The Giants' defense has been the backbone of this team, giving up less than 20 points per game, which ranks eighth best in the NFL. So-so in yards per game and passing yards per game. They also have a problem stopping the run, but I haven't found that to be too much of an issue for the Giants, stopping Damian Pierce this week for the Giants. 
will be key. We'll get to my keys to the victory in here quick in a quick second. But first, I want to ask you guys this question. To predict the score. It's not really a question. I'm just asking you. To predict the score in the comments section. Let me know the winner and the score down in the comments. I think Giants 24-17, but I want to hear from you right now. Predict the score of Giants versus Texans. We usually do five keys to victory, but I think you can sum it up this week in three. I think there's three things you need to do if you want to walk out of week 10 sitting at seven and two. Stop Damian Pierce. He is the only chance that the Texans have at beating the New York Giants. I mean, last week against the Philadelphia Eagles, the guy was amazing. The guy against the Eagles last week had 139 rushing yards, and on the season, he's averaging 4.6 yards per pop, three touchdowns, 678 yards. If you stack the box, you make Davis Mills throw the rock, he's going to throw it to the team and blew a couple of times. Stop Damian Pierce. That's going to be big for Wink Martindale in this defense. Look for Jalen Smith and Tay Crowder to be active this week. you got to establish the run game early and often. I don't want a repeat of week whatever it was. The last time we played and we lost against the Seattle Seahawks, you threw the ball one time in your first eight plays. Reverse that because the Texans have the worst pass def uh, rush defense excuse me, in the NFL. Get Saquon Barkley going early and often. Feed Saquon Barkley the rock. Let him go to work. The Texans have the worst rush defense in the NFL. Find a way to get him going. 779 yards, 5 TDs. I think this could be a multi-TD game for Saquon Barkley as he gets closer and closer to that 1,000-yard total for this season. I want to see a game where Saquon Barkley goes for 150 and two touchdowns. And also, you can get him featured in the passing game. Set the, set the tone, run the ball early and often, make them feel Saquon Barkley, pause, but get the ground game going because I think Saquon is a guy that could dominate the Houston Texans. They have a terrible, terrible, terrible run defense. Feed 26, that's going to be key this week. And this is pretty chalk, but when you're the better team in all areas and you're favored by six and a half points in Vegas, do the little things. Don't turn the ball over on special teams. Win the turnover battle. Be better on third down. Get off the field on third down. Don't commit stupid penalties. Don't let them linger around. When the Giants get off to an early lead, put them in the dirt. Jump out to an early lead and continue to pile on. Don't give them any chance or any hope of being able to come out and come back. Establish the ground game. Stop Damian Pierce and do the little things. And the Giants will come out of this game victorious. I also think you need to get some pressure on Davis Mills, make him uncomfortable back there, and win the special teams battle. Focusing on the special teams, because that's why we lost against the Seattle Seahawks. We didn't do the little things. This week, you do the little things and you'll win. Make sure to give me a follow on Twitter, at Marshall Green underscore. As always, shout out to the real ones if you made it this far in the video. That means you're a real one because the real ones always tune in and they always finish every single video. So if you made it this far in the video, go ahead, type real one down in the comments.